<clears throat> so what's the first step in uh, getting a prayer answered? Guess what? You got to ask. See, that's where most people don't, they don't even ask. Or if they do ask, they don't ask in a way that gets the answer. So they're not really asking because if you ask, you receive. Does this make sense? Yep. So you have to decide, okay, what am I going to ask about? What am I asking for? What is the answer? Now, listen, let's uh, just look at the man at the Pool of Bethesda. Jesus asked him a simple question. Wilt thou be made whole? The man said, he answered, I don't have a man to put me in the water and when it's trouble. And he said, and while I'm trying to get there, other people get in ahead of me. Now, is that what Jesus asked him? Nope. Did that have anything to do with what Jesus asked him? Nothing. And yet, here's this man that Jesus just asked him, will you be made whole? Do you want, do you desire? Is it your desire to be made whole? And the man just started complaining. So here's a key lesson in prayer. When you go to God, don't go with a complaint. Go with an answer. You get that? Go with an answer. Father, you said in your word right here in this verse, by your son Jesus, whom I know is the truth, you said this, and you said that if I do this, you will do that. So I, now I have done that, and I, now I know you're going to be faithful to do your part. Now, see, that process is what I do. Now, I don't use these words necessarily, but every time I lay hands on the sick, I'm putting that process into action. See, there are prayers with words, and there are prayers of action. That by doing something, it shows you're expecting God to answer. That makes sense? Yes. And so there's a process that you can go through. Now, uh, in matter of fact, we talked about, uh, well, there's so many scriptures about how faith will overcome. See, we have to coordinate all of these scriptures together. And he said that if you have faith, all things are possible. So then it's just a matter of, do I have faith? And most people say, well, I don't know if I have enough faith for that. No, it's not about enough faith. It's just faith, right? It, it, it's amazing how people say, well, I just don't know if I have enough faith. Wait a minute. <clears throat> so you have enough faith <clears throat> to change your eternal destiny <clears throat> and believe that you're saved and believe you're going to spend eternity with God. <clears throat> and you did that through pretty much one prayer. And yet you don't think you have enough faith to do some other little thing here. Come on. You've already had the greatest faith you'd never have. Amen. You did that the moment you got born again because you had no right to get born again. Amen. You had nothing to, to base that on other than the grace of God. He offered it and I jumped in. Right. And now you're saved. And yet, for some reason, you think all the other stuff, you have to have so much greater faith for it. You know why? Well, I can tell you partially one reason. <clears throat> if you have a hard time believing that healing power was delivered to you or that you have received it because your body doesn't look different yet, then how much more should you not believe you're saved? Because I can guarantee if I followed you around for a day, some point you wouldn't look saved. Don't be following me around either. Because <laughs> we're not perfect. We all make mistakes. No, no. <laughs> hey, Amen. Does this make sense to you? Listen, God knows us. He knows our frame, <laughs> Psalm 103 says. He knows we're but dust. He knows all that stuff, right? And yet, for whatever reason, he still showed up to save us. You know, here, what you're going to see in the, well, it'll be a little while now because I'm fixing to go to Africa. Well, Mark 11, 22, <clears throat> Jesus said, have faith in God. He said, for verily I say unto you that whosoever, and get this, shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Notice it's a command. Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. Now, doubt in this sense means this. It means not wavering. 
You got that? Not wavering. That means you don't back off. That means you don't, well, uh, yeah, I received, but I, you know, how come I'm not feeling anything different? Uh, you just wavered. Why? Because that means you quit looking at the scripture and you started looking at the circumstances. And these things only help us when we look not at the things which are seen, but we look at those things which are not seen. What are the things that are not seen? The things that the scripture describes. We have to look at that beyond what we can see. And this sounds crazy. It, it makes no sense from a natural mind, which is why the natural mind can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. But now here's the thing. If you can't do that, okay, now I will tell you this. Whosoever can do that. You get that? So it's open to any person. But how do you do that? You get in this word, and you get this word in you. You abide in him, and his words abide in you. If his words abide in you, you're looking at the things which can't be seen. And when you're looking at things which can't be seen, listen, you can only look at two things one at a time. You're either going to look at the things which can be seen, or you're going to look at the things which cannot be seen. And if you look at the things which can be seen, that's not Christianity. You have to look at the things which cannot be seen, which, like I said, makes no natural sense. But, and like I said, if you can't, okay, like I said, whosoever can, so any person can, but it's really, at this point, I would even say whosoever will. You get the difference? Because anybody can, but not everybody will. And here's how you do it. You get in this book, you look at this book, you read this book, and if need be, whatever the problem is in front of you, you put the book in front of your face. And you look at that instead of that problem. And then whenever that problem starts mouthing off, you mouth off. Amen. And you mouth off right back at it. And you said, no, mountain, uh, you, you need to listen because you've got to go. Amen. And you start speaking to it. Now, I don't know what your mountain is. Your mountain could be a disease. If so be, then you need to speak to that mountain and say, no, sickness, you cannot live here. Amen. Why? Because this body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So you must leave and you command it to go and you put your foot down and then you don't back off of that. Now, maybe your mountain is a child that's not living right. Well, in that case, again, you can't look at the lifestyle of the child. Nope. You have to look at this. Amen. And, then, and guess what? When you start really looking at this, you know what's going to happen? There will be people that will go out of their way to remind you of how your child is living. And so whenever that goes on, you have to plug your ears and just be able to look at this and go, nope, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Me and my whole house shall be saved. Amen. This is the way it will be. You say, well, but you don't have any say-so over their will. No, but I can sure speak the word of God and the promises of God, which allows the angels to be released to go bring the gospel in front of their eyes 24-7 and make them so miserable as a sinner <clears throat> that they will actually give their heart to God and come back home like they're supposed to. Yes. Amen? Amen? We may not have you know, power over their will, but we can sure, have, we do have power over their circumstances. Amen. Amen. And we can make those circumstances so miserable, right? <laughs> okay. Ask me how I know. 